Hi folks, welcome to another video, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about my stag. We're here to retrieve stag. Now, this has not been out of the garage, I don't think, since September last year. Poor stag, bloody cat prints all over it. Poor stag. Right. I'm just going to want the damn good clean and polish. I'm not the sort of chap who cleans cars though. Um, let's pop that in there. Hello Mr. Stag. Let's do a, not a cold start. Well, I suppose it is a cold start but let's do a, it hasn't been started in eight months. Oh, are we going to work? Right, where's my keys? There's my keys. While I was here, just going around the cars and so forth. Mrs. Car. <laughs> Told her. Pair of new front tyres, Jackie. Can't be doing things like that. I'm not around it, you see. The place goes to the dogs. And then I turn up. Look at cats sliding down my windscreen. What's wrong with the cat? Right, okay. Now, immobiliser is on, it's off. Is it gonna start? Might have some biohazard on the steering wheel. It's been a while. Let's go over, give it a damn good clean inside this car. Stitchings will come apart on the steering wheel. Never mind, we can soon fix that. Right, let's have a bit of choke. The ignition is on. Is it going to start? Fucking is. Just knock it off a fast idle. Well, that's not bad, is it? fuel in here is prehistoric. Right, what I need to do, that's disgusting too. Ah, what I need to do is to get this, let's just check the clutch works. Yes, clutch works. I need to put that in there. And I'm going to see if I can encourage one of my sons to wash this. I'm going to put some fresh fuel in it, and this is going back to Devon with me tonight. It's not choking at the moment. Good old Stroms. After October, November, December. Eight months of complete nutter neglect. And it goes. Goes right. So I bought this um, this stag in April 1994. Um, yeah, I bought it. I was absolutely blind drunk down the pub, enjoying some light refreshments with my chums. And uh, one of the lads that I used to drink with um, had this in his garage. He'd done a body restoration on it um, and was seeking to raise some money uh, to buy his first house. And I said I'd have it. I mean, I paid good money for it at the time. Um, it turned up as an absolute box of bits. Um, it was together, but very loosely bolted together, no MOT. Um, at the time, it was painted in the paper white colour. This is Triumph 19 white. It's much, much creamier. We compare it to a piece of paper. You'll see that it's much... Will you see? I don't know. You might see. You might not. White balance might be all, all, to, all to pot on this, but uh, it's much creamier than a paper white. Screen went to sleep. That's no good, is it? So, um, yeah, it was paper white when I got it. Um, it was all right. It was in good shape. I got the engine and everything, kind of replaced the chains on it, did odds and sods, really. It's my second stag. First stag was a bit of a nail. Um... 
But uh, yeah, that, that, was, that was the start of a long relationship. Now, why is it called Rupert? Because I know you guys will be asking. I don't generally name cars. I know that cars are named on this channel, but that's largely to differentiate between the different projects that I'm doing. So the girl I used to drink with down the pub quipped that the car is actually um, quite butch, but it's a little bit too pretty. A bit like Rupert Everett. And ever since then, it's stuck. And that's why, you know, I'm Richard the Stag, and this is Rupert the Stag. <laughs> Not that I'm like Rupert Everett. I don't look anything like Rupert Everett. I look like a tramp most of the time. Yeah. So you can see, you know, this, this car, so the stag, this isn't a, an exercise. This is not a history lesson in Triumph Stags. Um, this is uh, about my stag. If you want to know about Triumph Stags, um, then there are plenty of other channels and plenty of other books and memes to, uh, to learn about them. But effectively, it's a 1960s design by uh, Micheletti, um, who was great friends of uh, Harry Webster, blah, 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 borrowed a Triumph saloon, um, to make a style salute or style buck for something to Micheletti to, to promote at the car show. Harry Webster saw it said, I'm having that. Um, and Stag was born. Is it as bad, though, as people make out? Do you know what? No, it isn't. They're fantastic little cars. They really are. Um, yes, I've had to rebuild the engine on this one twice. Yes, it has design flaws. Yes, it's not perfect, but for a car that was essentially designed in the 1960s, it's a good one. I like it. Also, the Stag as a design was launched in June 1970, so this design is actually coming up for its 50th birthday. Not bad, eh? Right, let's have a quick poke around. And I'll talk to you about this car. <clears throat> I'm not going to go over all the boring features and things in the car like electric windows and this one's got a manual overdrive gearbox and, but I will talk about some of the nicer features of it. Right, so we just get the hood up. Now the hood is actually released. There's a small lever thing down here. And... Then the back of the hood raises, and a little bit like the Merc SL, which is ironic, really, because this thing should have beaten Mercedes at the Bobby Ewing game. It really should have done. Um, and it was disputes between the workforce and the management mediated by the unions that really destroyed any hope of that and the British car industry as a result. But anyway, that's enough of that bollocks. Oh, look, that's broken. Oh, I hadn't noticed that. Oh, dear. <laughs> Shocker, 48-year-old roof catch brakes. Um, it's rare for the roof to be up on this thing, actually. Um, if it ain't raining, then the roof is not up. Now, what we're looking at here is kind of one of the signature pieces of the stag that the hood stows away beautifully. Look at that bonnet port on this side. Most important part of a stag is the Triumph V8. Much maligned. Is it as bad as they say? I don't think so. Why have I rebuilt this thing twice? Well, there's a story there. So, um, the when I first got the car, it done 97,000 miles. Um, and it wasn't long after that that he started to knock a big end bearing. Um, I ended up pulling that engine out. Um, it was original pistons, original bearing, original crank. Uh, never been apart before as far as I was aware. Might have had heads off, but the bottom end had never been apart before. But, uh, um, and it was just about worn out. Now, these days, for an engine to last just 100,000 miles, it's like kind of like, blimey, really? What a piece of crap. Um, but back in, you know, this engine was designed in the 1960s and it wasn't uncommon then for engines to be re rebuilt, you know, 30, 40,000 miles. For something to last 100,000 miles, pretty good going. So that's the first time I rebuilt it. Why did I have to rebuild it a second time? Well, poor parts supply. So the crankshaft in these things has got to be hardened. Um, machine shops will tell you, no, 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 it doesn't need to be hardened, blah, 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 blah. The problem is the crank um, is only surface hardened and when you grind them down by 10 thou to put new bearings on you go through that surface hardening 
and then because the bearings aren't soft like they were when these things were first built um, it will chew its way through another bearing another set of bearings going this side so my shadow is not across the car um, and the reason I had to rebuild the engine a second time was because I might have been a little bit enthusiastic with the throttle and I might have over revved it and I might have because these things they rev up to There we are, six and a half thousand RPM. Oh yeah, I guess the business end in a minute on this. Six and a half thousand RPM, and I was I was some way over that. <laughs> oops, oopsie, oopsie, oops. Yes, um, silly on my part. Um, I over revved it, um, and I blew the head gasket. Um, I actually blew around cylinder number two. Since number two, so it blew around number two, so I had to get the head off. Um, and getting the heads off these things is a ball's ache. I'm not even going to go there, but basically, slant bolts here and, and, and slant, slant studs there, and bolts down here. And the idea was cause overhead camshaft, blah blah blah. Anyway, when I pulled the head off, um, a couple of the threads were actually stuck in the block, they'd seized into the block. Um, so that engine rebuild was oh, a bit of paper out there. 2006 so we're talking um, uh, 10 years since the last engine rebuilt and about 30,000 miles now um, because of the stuck studs I had to strip the engine block down and it had to go away to be machined uh, and when I pulled the crank out it hadn't been hardened despite the fact I bought it as a hardened crank and all of the journals were absolutely and utterly ruined on it so yeah caveat emptor when it comes to buying parts for these cars buy them from a reputable source um, I had to buy another crank, exchange the old one for it, bought another crank and rebuilt the engine up around that. Um, so this is that same engine that I rebuilt in 1996, uh, but it's not original to the car I'm afraid. The original engine died, um, more or less as I pulled it apart. Um, it wasn't so much the fact that the bearings had gone, it's that three of the main bearing caps had broken in half. Uh, for one reason or another, I don't know don't quite know why they've broken in half but they had anyway that engine was, was scrap it was a boat anchor but the heads are original to this car and distributor and all the other bits of bobs are so it's just hard to get a new block for it um right enough gabbing on about engines a uh, body this body i restored or had restored in 2006 so it had been bodily restored when i first bought it in 1994 uh, but it was starting to look a bit scruffy and it's starting to look a little bit scruffy again there's a couple of areas where it's starting to but bearing in mind this car was restored 14 years ago and i'm not enormously precious about it i use it it's a car i use didn't use it much last year because i was setting up business and so forth but it's in pretty good shape still i think certainly not too shabby blob of rust coming through the bottom corner of the door down there to treat some of this stuff there's a few bubbles down here it's not the end of the world i'm happy enough with it uh one of the things i do need to sort out though is this engine bay it's scruffy i mean it's an engine bay not entirely sure what you're expecting but it could be tidier than this Um, right, when it comes to modifications on this engine, what have I done? Uh, nothing as far as the internals are concerned, other than the hardened crank, which is standard. It's running um, a, a flamethrower coil and a Petronics igniter ignition module, which sits inside the distributor. Um, silicon leads, standard plugs, um, Thomas header tank, which I've converted into being an expansion tank because it just didn't work as a header tank. I'll talk about overheating on these things in a separate video, but uh, this thing's only ever overheated on me once, and it was because of this thing. Um, largely because of that thing. There were other reasons. This thing here is a fuel pressure regulator, and again, uh, if you've watched the Stromberg strip down uh, that I did, because we've got Stromberg CD2175s, or CD175 CD2s, I should say, um, and these I've built again. Not the best out there, but yeah, they work. Um, this thing regulates the fuel pressure to two and a half PSI. Otherwise you overwhelm the float needles on those. So this thing, how have I turned it into an expansion tank? I've just blocked off the return feed to the top pipe. Um, and that solved all of my hot running problems. 
funny old game, eh? Um, and the reason why the hot running problems occur, and I'll do it in a separate video as well, is the feed for this tank comes off the T-piece on the top of the water pump, which is underneath the air filter down here. So down here we've got the heater feed that comes off the top of the water pump, which is down here. Um, and it tees off that and goes into, and basically what happens is, um, I think what happens is uh, the radiator, which is a super gill dropping in this one, and the radiator uh, is more difficult to draw water through, through the bottom hose down here, than it is to pull water straight from the inlet. So what effectively happens is, by running this thing as a header tank, um, it, with the plumbing that's got this way round, I was just bypassing the, uh, bypassing the radiator. It's not very helpful, is it? Um, I'm going to get rid of this fella anyway. I'm going to put a, um, a fork, because it's actually quite useful having the higher um, expansion tank on this. Um, and the reason being is the expansion bottle normally sits down there, right down below the level of the radiator, and it kind of comes in off this pipe up here. Um, and what then happens is um, that as the engine cools down, the vacuum inside the cooling system draws the water back into the radiator and keeps it topped up. Um, sealing these things up, especially when they're not used frequently. I mean, you can see I've got water in the V down here. I haven't used this car since September, end of September last year, 2019. Um, and I kind of dragged it out of the garage on Friday and hauled it 200 miles down to Devon after checking tyre pressures and fluid levels, and that was it. Um, so because of that, Things like the water pump seals and so forth that are underneath here, they will leak. Um, the inlet manifold gaskets are good on this, and I'll go through all that as part of the engine and kind of um, cooling system discussion I'll have. Um, but yeah, so having a high level expansion tank with a low coolant level sensor on it is actually quite useful in a stag. Some people will argue that if your cooling system's perfect, then you won't need it, but it doesn't matter how infrequently or frequently you use your stag, a damp V is, is, is quite, you know, common um, and it often comes from the water pump overflow because the water pump seals oh, 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 wear out slowly but surely. So I'm not bothered about that, so I'll leave that as an expansion tank, It'll get replaced with a Ford, I think it was an XR4i tank I've got um, and I'll replace that again as a high level expansion tank, just somewhere for the uh, cooling system to expand into and rather than having all this kind of setup with these big hoses off the TB, I'll just run it off the original um, uh, overflow, the expansion overflow for the radiator. What else on the engine can we discuss? Strommies, marvellous things. I'll go through, I'll, I'll do a tune-up. Now I've got all the tuning videos and so forth. I'll actually go through a tune-up video on, on how the Strommies work and how to get them tuned up and working nicely. But yeah, you can understand why I might want to just tidy this engine bay up. It's gonna be taking some of the ancillaries off around the outside, getting it back to bare metal in here, giving it epoxy primer, and probably find myself a um, an enamel type of paint, which I'll just paint over the inside of the engine bay. I probably won't spray paint it. Uh, I've got a leaky um, uh, cam gasket down here. They're cork, they do leak, I'm afraid. It's a 1960s car, I don't know what you're Kind of looking for here but yes they leak um, just need to replace the cam gasket on that head um, and this one here it's just got a misting of oil around the top of it i don't think i've cleaned this engine bay in well, pretty much since i built the engine up again <laughs> and then when i built the engine i was so fed up with the money it cost me because i had to rebuild the whole bloody engine again i just ended up lobbing it back in again using it <sighs> right, what else? Um, yeah, this, this car was originally uh, automatic, so it originally had a Borg Warner 35 um, automatic gearbox in it. Um, and now you can see it very clearly hasn't. It's got a manual overdrive gearbox in it. And that's because at about, I think it's about 110, 115,000 miles, the automatic gearbox started making lots of odd noises. Um, it turned out to be the front pump um, was on its way out. Uh, the rebuild costs on the automatic gearbox were horrendous um, and I can actually get myself a rebuilt manual overdrive gearbox for the Stag for less money. I fancy stirring the gears, so I thought, what the hell, let's do that. Um, right. What else can we talk about? Bonnet can go down. Yeah, I'll put it down. 
pretty light intake. I do like the shape of them. Oh, that's cracked as well. That's me putting it in my garage at home because the hardtop sits on this side of the car. I've obviously just kissed the hardtop. Bastard. Never mind. Shit happens. And it's impressive as well that from the original design, um, this thing isn't actually that far different from the original prototype. The, the key difference here is that the, the, the production car has a T-bar. T-bar rollover hoop does add an awful lot of um, stability, rigidity to the body shell. Um, but the original car, the original prototype didn't have this T-bar. And I think the T-bar, correct me if I'm wrong, stagger fishing in Ardos, I think the T-bar went in um, as some sort of, um, I guess appeasement to the American market who were looking to ban convertibles at the time for some bizarre reason. But anyway, so the T-bar went in, rollover protection. Drums on the back, discs on the front, rusty drums on the back, discs on the front, but the brakes actually are pretty strong on these things. I'm sure if you're on a racetrack, you know, you're going to find that the brakes might fade a bit, but generally for day-to-day -day use, the brakes aren't bad on these at all. And nor is the performance. Okay, 0 to 60 is about nine and a half seconds, which is it really isn't kind of blistering performance as far as kind of modern day standards are concerned. But in its day, that was quite respectable. You know, it, it went. It's a good effort. Um, the thing is, once these things are rolling, they tend to the performance is pretty good. Got a stainless um, exhaust system on this thing. So these are slightly larger than standard balls on the exhaust. No, someone touched part me ages ago. Oh, I'll tell you there's an interesting thing here. Look at the back end of this car here. Yeah, let's look at the back end here. One of those rear light um, uh, units is reproduction, and one of them is original. Can you work out which one's which? Yeah, this is the reproduction one. The one that's completely faded and pitted. It looks like a bag of shite. That's the reproduction. That's the original. <laughs> Fuck's sake. What are you gonna do these days? So I'm gonna need to get a new one of those. Boot on these things is quite respectable. It's decent size. I've broken the springs off on this, by the way. They should hold themselves up. But the boot is quite a respectable size. You can certainly lob a couple of suitcases in here. And then also you've got the room under the hood uh, cover to put a couple of uh, squashy bags, like I say. Right, I think let's go for a drive. I've got to go into town anyway. So let's head off into town and do a drive. Right. brake pedal.
things here, these quarter lights, they're bloody good. Just look at these, these are the best screen units just ever. I don't know why they put them complete, why they don't put them on cars these days. I suppose they're old fashioned people look at them and think, oh, that's all fashion. So am I. Let's go. 